G'day and welcome to another video. In today's lesson we are going to make this gorgeous shawl. I would rate this project as a easy to intermediate. The stitches are easy to do, we just need to pay attention to our beginning and the end of our rows. There is a ribbon pattern available for this shawl and that is located on my website. This shawl looks fantastic in one colour but you can also make it with two colours. There are two versions available, we have a small and a large version of the shawl. I would like to give a shout out to Snapdragon who sell these awesome crochet tights. These are lycra tights and they are fantastic. They're extremely comfortable to wear. They have a high waist and check out the granny square print. These are my absolute favourite and I couldn't resist when I saw them. I will put Snapdragon's link in the description box so you can go and check them out for yourself. I highly recommend them and they are made very well and extremely comfortable. So let's get started on the lesson. For our supplies we're going to need a pair of scissors, yarn needle with a large eye, four stitch markers. It's going to be better if one of your stitch markers is different to the other three. So you can see here I've got some yellow ones and then I've got a pink one for the other one because this one that's a different colour that's going to remind us when to do our decreases. I've personally found that easier because I kept forgetting. I've got three that are the same and then one that's different. So it's a total of four. If you're just going to use yarn as your stitch markers, then maybe you just use one different colored piece of yarn to the other three. We're also going to need a crochet hook that is four sizes bigger than what's recommended for your yarn. This yarn is a DK or an eight ply yarn and that's an, an Australian DK or 8 ply. This is an American DK or a light worsted number 3 yarn. This recommends a 4mm or a G size crochet hook. So I will be using a 6mm which I think is a J size crochet hook in America. But as long as it's 4 sizes bigger than what's recommended. If you have super loose tension then it'll probably go with three sizes bigger. My tension's loose so I'm going to go with four sizes bigger. If you have really tight tension then maybe go up again in hook size so maybe a six and a half or a seven. What we're aiming for is loose tension because we want our shawl to have really nice drape. The yarn that I'm using today is from Fiberific and Fiberific is an Australian business and you can find them at Fiberific com.au. Chantelle is wonderful and has hand dyed yarn as you can see as well as crochet and knitting tools and lots of other goodies. So the yarn we are using today is called Andromeda and it is 100% merino and you can see that it's an 8 ply. We've got approximately 195 meters per 100 grams and each ball is 100 grams. I've actually got two of each. I'm going to be using two colours today and I'm going to be making the small size shawl. I will not need all 400 grams but I know I'm going to need at least more than one of each colour so I will have some leftovers for that. If you're going to make the larger size shawl you are going to need 300 grams of yarn but if you're going to use two colours then I would suggest having three of each colour just in case you run out on one of your colours. The coffee one used 200 grams. My friend Joss made that up for me and she used 200 grams of yarn. Not all of 200 grams but she had two balls of yarn and she's got tight tension and made the large and it's actually a lot smaller than mine. And I used just under 300 grams of yarn and I made the large version as well. So depending on your tension you can use more or less yarn. But if you've got three skeins of one colour that is going to be plenty to make this shawl. This will work in a worsted weight yarn or even a four ply yarn which is a fingering weight or an Aussie four ply. I have not made it in that thickness of yarn. But if anyone makes a fingering weight yarn or a Australian four ply then please let me know how much you used and put it in the comments below. And we're going to have our ribbon pattern so if you're wanting one of those there's one located on my website. I will put the link that you need in the description box below the video. To start off I'm going to be using the Tiff colorway. And you can see it's wound into a cake. Oops, got a yarn ball. So we're going to start with a slip knot and you can do that any way that you like. And what we need to do is chain four.
and we're going to work one half double crochet into the third chain from the hook and you're going to do a yarn over, go into the third chain from the hook and make a half double crochet. We don't work into this last chain because it creates the point of the shawl. If you don't want that last chain there left, I would suggest starting with three chains and then half double crochet into that first chain. So if you don't want this one on the end, I can show you on the coffee version what that looks like once it's blocked. This here is the unworked chain and it gives it a nice point. If you don't want that, then just do the three chains and half double crochet into the third chain. So we're now going to place a stitch marker on this row on the right side of the work. So the side that you're looking at, so that means the crochet that you're looking at, that's your right side. You're going to get one of your stitch markers. I'm just going to pop this down to open it up. So the side that you're looking at is the right side. I'm just going to take my crochet hook out. I'm going to drop it. And we're going to put our, cro our stitch marker anywhere on that side. It doesn't matter what stitch you go through just as long as it's on the front of the work and you can see it. So this helps us further along in the pattern. So just leave that attached there. We're going to turn our work, so we're going to turn our work around so we should not be able to see the stitch marker. We're going to chain three. We're going to put a stitch marker in the third chain that we just made. Now at first this is a little bit fiddly, but when you come back across it helps you know where to crochet into and I found that I couldn't remember where to go because it does get a little confusing as we work. Or you might be awesome and be able to tell where you need to go, but I just couldn't. <laughs> so in that third chain, and we're going to work three half double crochet into the top of the chain three from the previous row. So you can see our chain, mm -hmm. take 355. So the chain that's here, we are going to work three half double crochets into the top of the chain. So one, two, and three. Yarn over and work three half double crochets. One, two, and three. So each time we do a chain three, we're going to move up the stitch marker from the row below and mark the third chain that we just made. So you can't do that on this one because we haven't got one on this side yet, but you'll have one over there when you get to that one. So chain three. Grab your stitch marker and mark the chain three, the third chain of the chain three. And then we're going to turn our work around. We're going to work two half double crochets into the same stitch as the chain three. So you've got this the chain three coming out here. Your stitch is down here. I'm going to work two half double crochet into that. So this counts as our increase. And we have two stitches left. Now you can see here, kind of looks like there's only one, which is there, but you've got one there and then one there and there one there and then the next one marked is the chains so you have two stitches left and we're going to work a half double crochet decrease into the two stitches so the one there where the hole is and that one there 
and then this one that's marked where it's pinned in there that's our chain three so we want to work a half double crochet decrease so yarn over go into the next stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over go into the next stitch which is there yarn over pull up a loop we've got one two three four five loops yarn over and pull through all of those loops we're going to leave this chain unworked and that's how we decrease on the end of our shawl so we're going to chain three grab the stitch marker down here which was marking the previous chain three Okay, so now what we're going to do is mark it with the stitch marker that's the different colour. Because this end of our row is our decrease. It just, it just helped me remember. You can use all the same if you want. So row 4 is our wrong side. So our stitch marker that's marking the right side will be over this side. That side. So we're flipping it to the back and we're doing a chain three which we've already done that and we're going to half double crochet in each stitch across and we're going to work three half double crochets into the top of the chain three so we can figure that out now so we're going to go in each stitch across so we're going to work into here and work a half double crochet in the next two stitches and then you can see we've come up to our chain which is marked so see we could easily forget that if that wasn't there and that's what I was doing when I was making my sample and I thought what can I do let's mark a stitch so into the next one we're going to work three half double crochets and I like to get both loops of the chain and we're going to work three half double crochet chain three we're going to mark that stitch as our shawl gets bigger you will be changing your stitch markers less because you'll have more stitches on the row and it won't feel like you're changing your stitch marker every second stitch <laughs> we're going to chain three so we've already done that and two half double crochet in the same stitch so the easy way to remember what you've got to do at the end of the row or beginning of the row you've just done an increase so you did three stitches in the same stitch just on that last stitch before so you've got to do another increase because this side of the shawl is all increases and this side of the shawl with our different colour is all decreases so we go into that same stitch and we work two half double crochet and then in each stitch across we're going to work a half double crochet until we have two stitches left and we're going to work our half double crochet decrease so yarn over go into the next stitch yarn over pull up a loop you've got three yarn over go into the next stitch yarn over pull up a loop you've got five stitches that's sorry five loops yarn over and pull through all those loops and here we are we have our chain at the end we're going to miss that because we don't work into that one and now we are going to repeat row four so row four was chain three get your stitch marker mark your third chain 
half double crochet in each stitch across and because we're coming up to the other side it's our increased side because it's the one that's the same color stitch marker so it's starting to make sense now it's not the pink so we know when we come up to there it's like your different color stitch marker when we come up to here we know that it's an increase side so go into that last stitch there because the next one is marked apologize for my stitch marker banging on the counter So when we come to this marked stitch, you can take that out. We know it's the end of the, the we know it's the third chain. Now I like to grab both loops. See that loop there and this loop there? I like to get those two. So I'll kind of like grab that one. And grab that one. And then work three half double crochets in there. We're now starting our cross stitch rows. So we've just done six rows, so row seven. The pattern, it doesn't actually tell you to finish off the colour. It's written for one colour, so you can cut that off. And just so I can change colour properly, I'm going to pop those three loops that we had there. I'm going to put them back on my crochet hook and I'm going to grab my pink yarn. And I'm going to put this on my crochet hook. I'm literally just laying it over the top, pinching them and pulling through. Making sure that's long enough to sew in. That stitch marker's banging again. Chain three. And we're going to turn our work around. And I have just had the camera off for like three minutes so I've completely forgotten which end I'm on so I know this end is my very decrease end because it's my different colored stitch, stitch marker someone gave me this one I don't remember who it was but it's really pretty I love it it goes perfectly with my project so I know that's my decrease end so I know this end is my increase end so I can also look at my stitch marker this you can see this so it's the right side of your work so I know I'm up to row 7 because I was just about to change to do the cross stitch and row 7 is a right side so I know that I'm in the right position. So it says chain 3, two, dub two double crochet this time in the same stitch. So yarn over, go in that stitch, work a double crochet. I'm going to assume that you know how to do a double crochet. And we want to work 2 in that same stitch so we have 3 stitches all together and that counts as our increase. We're going to cross stitch across the row and we're going to work a double crochet decrease in the last two stitches and we won't be working in the chain three. So to do a cross stitch you do a double crochet but you skip one stitch and you go into the next. So skip that one and go into the next. Work your double crochet. In the stitch that we skipped we're going to work a double crochet. So yarn over, put your hook back to the skip stitch and work the double crochet. Again we're going to skip a stitch. If you can't figure out if you've skipped this stitch, if you just pull that you can see that there's a loop of pink in that loop there. So skip this one and double crochet in the next. So skip and then double crochet and then we need to double crochet in the skip one which is there and work our stitch. I'm going to do this all the way across. I won't get too many on this first row because it's quite small at the moment. So it says to work your way across until you have two stitches left, not including your chain three. So our chain three is here because it's marked with our stitch marker. And this one and this one is our two stitches that are left. And we need to work a double crochet decrease. So we're going to yarn over. We're going to go into the stitch, so we're not skipping any stitches now because we're just working a decrease. So in there, yarn over, pull up, 
yarn over, pull through two, keep the two loops on your crochet hook, yarn over to do another double crochet, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. You have three loops on your crochet hook, you're going to yarn over, pull through all three stitches. So we're going to go to our next row which is row 8 and we are going to chain 3. You'll notice I haven't turned my work yet, I don't know, it's just a habit I get into a chain and then turn. So we've done our chain 3, we need to move our stitch marker up. And we're going to pop it into our third chain that we did. If I can find it. Where is it? There. And we're going to cross stitch across and then we work three double crochet into the top of the chain three. We're going to skip this stitch because that counts as our chain three. So we're going to skip this one and then we're going to cross stitch into the next one because our cross stitches are stacked on top of each other. So see how there's a stitch here and there's a stitch there. We need to work into that one with a double crochet. Oops. And then go back into the skipped one. We're going to go to the next cross stitch and we skip the first stitch, go into the next one. Again, go to the next cross stitch, skip the first stitch, go into the next one. Three stitches left, the next two stitches and not a cross stitch, but you've got two stitches there, so you need to work a cross stitch into those. And then we should just have a chain three that's left. So each row there, you're going to gain an extra cross stitch. Because you've got one, two, three on the row below. This is a decrease. You've got your three cross stitches and that's an increase so this one should have four cross stitches one two three four and then this last stitch here we're going to work did I already take my stitch marker out or did I yes or did I forget to put it back in I don't know but luckily I know where to go <laughs> we've got our chain three there in the top of that chain we're going to work three double crochet So that's the end of that row. So our half double crochet rows are always worked in blocks of six and then our cross stitch rows get wider as we go along. So I'm going to finish off this pink row. But I want to leave the last two loops there because I'm going to change colour. And I'm going back to my blue. And it says half double crochet rows are always started on the right side of our work. So we're going to turn our work around. You can see the stitch marker. So we were on our right side. So that's good. It's good for me because I know I've done it right. <laughs> and it says note half double crochet rows are worked in blocks of six rows. So we're going to repeat rows 5 and 6 of our pattern for 6 rows of half double crochet. We're going to go back to our pattern and find rows 5 and 6. And row 5 is a right side row. And that starts off with a chain 3 and 2 half double crochets in the same stitch. Which works with our pattern because this is our decrease end. And then this is our increase end so we know we can... Do our chain three. Hang on, go 
otherwise my tension's gone loose. And we're going back to half double crochet now, so we want to half double crochet twice in the same stitch. And we're going to half double crochet across. And we're going to stop two stitches from the end, not including our chain three. So we've got our two stitches there. I just need one more half double crochet. So you may notice that my shawl looks a little bit weird and the bottom bit's missing down here, the blue bit. That's because my camera decided to eat one of my video clips. So I just need to film this part again and I just had to make a pretend shawl. So I've got the amount of stitches that we need. So it looks the same if I put it like that, but if I do go like that, obviously the bottom is missing. So what we were going to do is we have this row. It started with an increase. And then we half double crochet across and we come to the end we have our chain on the end and then we have two stitches left which is a cross stitch and we are going to make a half double crochet decrease so yarn over go into the stitch pull up a loop yarn over go into the next stitch pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three. So we'll start the next part, so we're going to chain up three. Move our stitch marker up. These stitch markers I'm pretty sure are different colours. I don't remember using a black one in this tutorial, but I cannot find the ones I used. So we're up our decrease end and I know I had my little pink dangly uh, stitch marker, which I also can't find. It must be in a project bag somewhere. <laughs> it's been a little while since I made the other part of the shawl. So we had our dangly pink on our decrease end, so we're on our decrease end at the moment. So we're going to turn around, we've done our chain three, and we're going to half double crochet across. And this is a repeat of rows five and six. The first blue row that we just did was row five. And the row that we're doing now is row six. Um, I'm not sure if I've said that in my video tutorial. But I'll just put it there. Sorry about this part. It's a bit all um, mixed up. But I don't know what happened. My video camera ate the video clip. And would you believe it actually put in a video clip from my hat pattern that I'd done before. So I don't even know. I'm confused as much as you are. So we have our two stitches left and then we have our chain three on the end so we're going to go all the way across and we are up to our increase end again I'm sorry if this stitch marker is different but this is the increase end and I'm, I'm sure this far into this shawl you've you've remembered which is your increase and which is your decrease end so to do our increase on the end here we want to find the top of the chain three I'm just going to remove that stitch marker so I can see that's just here. We're going to go through both loops. Oh, more thumbs. Why am I making this look so hard? <laughs> ah, we're so professional, aren't we? Let's go. That one and that one is what we need. So we're going to work three half double crochet into that third chain there. I feel like I'm really close to the screen. Let's go back slightly. And then we that's what's that? that's our second one and then we're going to do our third one. And you can see here that it's starting to increase out which means it's facing that direction, which is what we will have. Of course, you'll have more shawl down the bottom there, but if I go like that, you won't even know. <laughs> so we're going to repeat the last two rows, which I said was rows 5 and 6. And we're going to repeat these half double crochet rows until we have six rows in total. The shawl increases with our pink cross stitch rows, but the half double crochet rows stay exactly the same. So now I'm going to put you to Claire from the past who had the tutorial correct. And we're going to work our way from there. I'm at the end of my half double crochet rows and I've done six rows altogether. 
So that means it is time to go back to our cross stitch rows. So the very last stitch here, you can see that I haven't quite finished it off. Because what I want to do is add in my new colour. So for me it's my pink. So I'm just going to grab the yarn. And just lay that over there. Leave about 2-3 to three inches. And we're going to pull that through in those last loops. Make sure we've got enough there to sew in. And then we are going to do the repeat for the cross stitch rows. And this time we want to do four rows in total. And it's repeat of rows 7 and 8. And row 7 is our right side row. So when we flip this over, we should be looking at our right side. And you can see here that we're looking at our stitch marker. So we know that we're on the right side, but I like to do my chain first and then turn. So, so this three chain, finding our stitch marker, bring that into the third chain. And then turning our work around. And to start row seven, we need to do two double crochets into the same stitch as our chain three. So into here, we're going to work two double crochets. Then we are going to go straight into our cross stitch. So what we need to do is skip a stitch, which is this one here, and then double crochet in the next. So skip that one, double crochet in the next. And then we're going to double crochet into the one that we've just skipped, which is that one there. And we're going to repeat this the whole way across the row. So skip a stitch, go into the next one, work a double crochet, and then go back to the skip stitch and work a double crochet. So repeat this all the way across. So pause the video and I'll meet you when we are up the end and what we want to do is stop two stitches before the end not including our chain three because we're going to do a double crochet decrease. So pause the video and I'll see you there. So I'm coming up to the end of my row and I need to have four stitches left but I've only got three so that appears that I've missed an increase somewhere. I'm not going to pull my work out we're going to fake it till we make it. We're going to skip the next stitch and I'm going to complete a cross stitch which is what I need to do. And then we need two stitches left to complete a decrease which I don't have. I do have my chain three which is here with my marked stitch marker and then I've got one stitch there. So what I can do is I can work a decrease over this last stitch and the chain three or I can go into this stitch here and then work it into the next stitch which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go back into that stitch there, I'm going to work my double crochet but I'm going to leave my last two loops and then I'm going to work into the next stitch and then complete the stitch. Like I said you could do that over the last stitch and the chain three if you prefer and that's good that I missed that stitch because I can show you how to fix a mistake. It's not great that I did do it wrong <laughs> because I should have done it right but obviously I haven't somewhere and I'm not going to bother checking six rows to find out where I did it um, because this may be on a longer row and you don't want to pull all that work out but once you do that you've just corrected um, your mistakes so on the next row it'll be fine so we're going to go chain three because we're going to move up a row we're going to move our stitch marker up going to turn our work and now we're going to do the repeat of row 8 and we are on our wrong side row so I'm just checking that again we cannot see our stitch marker it's on the back of our work so we know we're on the wrong side of our work and we work a chain 3 which we've already done and then we cross stitch all the way across and we do 3 double crochet into the top of the chain 3 which is up the other end so we look at our work here and we need to find our first cross stitch which is there that's the cross stitch from the previous row 
this one here was our decrease that we did so we need to yarn over we're going to skip the first stitch of the cross stitch go into the next one and we're going to work a double crochet and then we want to work back into the skipped stitch that we just did so we can see the skip stitch which is here and we're going to work into that one so again our cross stitches are always stacked on top of each other so you miss the stitch, go back into that one and again next cross stitch is here and we're going to complete that so work your way across working into the top of each cross stitch and I'll meet you when we are at the end of the row I'm coming up to the end of my row and I have three stitches left so I've got this one, this one and the marked chain three in the next two stitches we are going to work a cross stitch so skip that one double crochet in the next and then go back into the skip stitch for our cross stitch and into this last chain we're going to work three double crochets Oops, hang on, I've got a minute, can I get that chain? Got ya. And then we're going to work our three double crochet into there. Once you get that first stitch in there, it's alright. So we're going to repeat rows seven and eight. So we want to chain three grab our stitch marker and mark our chain it's better if you mark the front of the chain rather than turning your work and then trying to figure it out I've made one of these shawls already so I found that was um, quite easy to do rather than turning your chain around and then trying to figure out where you've got to put your stitch marker so we're going to re repeat rows 7 and 8 again so that we'll have a total of 4 cross stitch rows so row seven was, if you turn this around, you can see we're on our increase end because we've got three stitches in the same. So we know this is our increase end and then we work our way across and that's our decrease end. If we look at our pattern, I don't need to show you what to do anymore because you have the pattern down pat, but you are going to have to look at your written pattern for the remainder of the shawl and it is going to show you that after we've done our four rows of cross stitch we are going to be going back to our half double crochet rows for six rows and then you have your cross stitch rows again but this time we're going to work six rows then you'll do six rows of half double crochet swap back to your cross stitch rows and you're going to do eight rows and then continue on so what happens is from now on when we do a section of cross stitch we're going to add two more rows each time we come to that cross stitch row so you can see here we've just done two at the beginning here we did two rows cross stitch so this section we're working now is going to be four rows the next section we work is going to be six rows the next one eight and so on and we keep going until we have ten rows of cross stitch and we'll finish on six rows of half double crochet for our small shawl and if you want to go for the larger version you'll keep going until you have 12 rows of cross stitch so it's a little bit bigger but you can see all the directions on the ribbon pattern which is located on my website and the link for that is in the description box so I will see you when we are finished our shawl to finish off all we need to do is cut our yarn and make sure you leave about two or three inches so you've got enough to sew in and then pull your loop through the stitch that's on your crochet hook and pull to snug and all we need to do is sew in our ends thank you so much for watching my video tutorial i hope you enjoyed it please leave a comment below letting me know what colors you have used for your shawl please follow me on instagram and we also have a facebook page i'd love to see your creations that you've made thanks for watching and until next time happy crochet